Mm-hmm. Okay, I'd like to go to 186 Tess. Okay, we discussed the laws of Lovud. There's a Lochum Shmisinai that if you have a space which is less than three Tvachim, we see that space is closed. We discussed it earlier, correct? We had a, a plank of wood that was four Tvachim. And you had two parallel walls. You put it within three Tvachim, a little more than three. It was a little more than four within three. So you cr- cr- completed a wall of what? Of seven. Right? There was a wall of seven. So let's say the wall is only height. A mechitza is only a mechitza of its ten tefachim. So let's say you have a frame which the, with, which the uh, schach sits on. Right? You build a frame. Now the wall is only a little more than seven tefachim from the floor up. So you have a gap. So the mechitza is not ten. It's only seven, a little bit more. But it's within three of this frame. So what do we do? You fill in the gap. Right? Because if you have a gap between two things, you fill it in. Well, let's say we rule... So 7 is 10. We rule that if you have a mechitza which is suspended. A mechitza even 10, 20, 12. But it's not on the ground. It's not a valid mechitza. That's what we rule. It's not a valid mechitza. So let's say you have a frame and you hammer onto the frame a piece of plywood. Which is 8 by 4 feet. And underneath there's a space which is three tefachim or more, it's not a valid sukkah. But if that piece of plywood is within three tefachim of the ground, then it's valid, because we see it closed. Go ahead. It's a different concept. See, mechitza there. The reason why you have to have a certain height is to separate between men and women. But if it doesn't affect that sort of Moshe holds that a mechitza has to be five feet, which is more than ten tefachim. Because though he says five feet with Moshe holds, it has to be five feet high. Why? Because five feet already is shoulder height. The whole thing is to, to pr- prevent intermingling the men, men and women. It's more sukkah towards the end of sukkah. So therefore, if it's less than five feet, the person can usually reach over and there can be uh, interaction between the men and the women. But if it's shoulder height, which is five feet, or basically that, then it's, it's not a problem. That's what Moshe's position. So I'm just saying, so if, in that, so it's a different concept. It's not Talach and Mechitza, which we talk about Shabbos or Sukkah. It's really, is it sufficient to separate between men and women? That's the question. <laughs> I mean, a woman could reach down or whatever it may be, you know. It's not simple. Not only there are other, not only that there are other problems. I mean, you know, I mean, even when Reb Moshe, 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 Moshe agrees that if a woman's not dressed properly and you could see her during davening, it's a problem. The, t- the two aspects of the there's separation and then there's, mechitza has nothing to do with, with seeing the woman. Mm-hmm. It's purely Reb Moshe, it's a separation. But let's say the woman is separated. But you could see the woman, and the woman's not dressed properly. Everybody agrees you're not permitted to daven. You know, you have to turn your head in the other direction. I mean, the location is valid to, to daven there, because the, it, it's a location that separates men and women. But if, if he, you have no choice but to look in that direction, and you, you can't daven by heart, you can't close your eyes, you have a problem. You're not permitted <laughs> to daven there. Some say very often when you have it's elevated the women's side, and especially women, the, the, the dresses aren't long enough, so you stand up and you see the, the lower part of the woman's body. It's above the knee, you see? Because it's, 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 it's exposed. It's a problem. They, they, here, you may have a kudu here. You know, there's a rachashulchan, whatever it may be. But the flesh of the woman above the knee, if that's exposed, and you see it during davening, you're not permitted to daven there. If a woman has short sleeves, and you see her, her above the elbow, it's a, you know, you're not permitted to daven in that direction, <coughs> looking at her. Okay? Makam pays judgment off them. There's nothing, I'm just telling the halacha. You apply the halacha.
Rav Moshe has a tshuva regarding mechitza. Somebody writes Rav Moshe, he says, I heard you rule that a 36-inch mechitza is sufficient. And there was such a mechitza in, uh, in Pennsylvania, a certain town, a town a city. So Rav Moshe writes back, he says, they say a lot of things in my name. And that's where he goes to explain the laws and what the principle of mechitza is regarding separating men and women in the shul. In the 50s and 60s, Rav Moshe was, was known in America, was the poser. So any rabbi who wanted to do anything, and you have a question, he says, well, Rav Moshe says it's okay. That was his response. Rav Moshe never even discussed it, maybe. But to protect himself, the rabbi's response was, Rav Moshe finds it says it's okay. Whether it's kashris, whether it was the shul, whatever it was, Rav Moshe says it was okay. So this person is writing Rav Moshe, that, or the rabbi said that the mechitz is valid because Rav Moshe ruled that it's okay. Okay? So you have walls which are a little bit more than seven. Seven and a little bit. Um, this already where the space is under the wall. Right? There's a gap between the ground and the bottom of the Bechitza. It's not a Bechitza. Kshero. Afilo agag of Oharbe. Even though now the space between the top of the wall and the Tzach could be many feet. Because once you have the Bechitza, you can say Gurasik. Right? Lovur establishes it as a Bechitza of 10. Once you have a Bechitza of 10, now you extend it upwards. As long as the schach is aligned with the top of the wall, so we extend it straight up. No, we're talking. The schach is within within range. We'll discuss it. We'll, we'll discuss it. It's, it's different because here, the halach of mechitza is unrelated to the schach. We'll discuss that. We didn't we didn't discuss the, the double halach of Shemini Sinai. What, but there it's where one's a direct outgrowth, there it's where one's an outgrowth of the other. There we have, you want to say, a, a good asik and to, and now, no, 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 a good asik now, but there's a gap between the schach, it's within three. So you have to say, a good asik, then, then a lovut. That's the double, that's the double of Mishim Sinai. We'll discuss it here. Ublavachi mechuven kenegdon, now this is important. But the schach has to be aligned with the top of the wall. Even if the even if the schach is not exactly, now this, this is the problem here. He's saying by the good asik, even if the, the schach is not directly above aligned above the wall, as long as it's within three, it's sufficient. Shero. See here, this is already this is a double half of Sinai. Because no, 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 not because of the bottom. You're saying good asik. We're saying good asik, and now we're saying although the schach is not directly above it, it's within three. We're saying a good asik, and now how do you associate that halachic wall with the schach? You have to apply another halachic shem Sinai. Love it. So I'm saying a double halachic shem Sinai to validate the sukkah, where one is contingent on the other, right? We'll see. There's, there's a Ran. The Ran says in, in Ervin and in, in Sukkah that if you ha- have to utilize double of Mishinai, we don't say it. it has to be, each one has to stand independent of the other. You have to stop directly above, go straight up. But here you have to say good Asik, and, but good Asik is not sufficient. You have to introduce new Allah Mishinai to get that wall, the Allah wall, to be associated with the, with the Schach. You need a Lovut. See, if you have a wall, what we're discussing. And you have a gap of less than three from the bottom of the wall to the ground. So I'm going to start first the mechitza. I have a mechitza. Fine. That's ten. That wall is a wall regardless whether it's a sukkah or not a sukkah. Correct? So now you want to extend it upward. But here, within the context of extending it upward, it has no value. Now you want to associate it with the schach. How do you get it to the schach? Now you need a love wood. That's called the double ochum. Should we see that? But there's no dofen. Dofen akum is when you have a reality of a wall. There's a space. There's an air. Dofen akum is only when you have when you have something which doesn't qualify as chach. Right? You have beams or, or whatever. You have a, a ceiling. You have a ceiling. Correct. Correct. 
That's the mechaber. But he says, not only that. No, that's not called double. That's not called. That's not a double halacha. Because I'm saying, because first you're establishing a wall. Now I'm saying good asik. One precedes the other. There, one is contingent on the other. You say good asik. So what's the value of good asik? Unless he's introduced a law, but the good asik has no value. Alan, you have a wall less than less than ten, and let's say it's eight. It's within two tefachim of the ground. So the mechaber says that's a wall. That's a mechitza, of course. You say lovud, and now you have schach lying on top. You say gurasik, but if you wouldn't said lovud on the bottom, you don't have a wall, so you can't. So one is an outgrowth of the other. That's that's one case. Then the other case is you say gurasik, but even if you extend the wall upward, it's not sufficient. Because there's a gap between the halachic wall and the schach. So you have to introduce the lovud to associate that halachic wall with the schach. So there, you need another halach mishinai to extend what a halachic wall to the schach. That you don't say. The Mechaber doesn't make that difference. The Mechaber doesn't say it. Yeah, but one is directly an outgrowth of the other. See, the other, I first established the wall. The first one. He's, it does make you. You're right. Both cases yeah, using, but one, but one is not directly a, an outgrowth of the other. One is you first establish something. Mechaber makes no. Makes the, the, he says the Mechaber doesn't differentiate. The Mechaber does not differentiate. We'll, we'll discuss it. They're similar, but they're not exactly the same. They're not. We'll see. Mechaber doesn't differentiate. Either they're both kosher. According to the Mechaber, they're both valid. Okay. He says, even even though it's not aligned exactly, it's within three tefachim, sheiro. Let's say the wall is ten high. Yeah. He's saying, again, let's say the wall, the space from the ground to the schach is ten tefachim. And you have a plank of wood which is only four and a little bit more. So what do you do? You center it. So if you center it, you have less than three above, on top and you have less than three, three on the bottom. So two love is not a problem. It's the same Allah Mishisina, right? So if you create it, you have a, a machitza of ten tefachim, although you only have, in, in, in material, four and a little bit more of, of, a, wall, of a plank. We say love it on the bottom on top and we see it as it's sealed. But what about if the walls, there will be a gap of three tvachim under the wall? So it's not valid because you're not able to say. Love it. Right? Simple. We'll just start the Mishnah a little bit here. If there's, no, not more, three or more. Three or more, it's correct. The gap is too big. Right, exactly. Post Mishlosha, the Amir Lovud, Vahavi Kesoso. Because we say Lovud, we see the seal, Vinipsi Ishkan Asura Tvochim, Afila Gagavo Harbeg. Even though the gap on top of the wall is very large, Vamina Gurasik Vachitsto. Because we extend the wall upward. Vavikilo a mechitza is magilus aschach. It's the equivalent of the mechitza. The halach of the mechitza is touching the aschach. Rakshi hu b'toch shlosha. The amrida lovud menatzad. We say lovud. I mean, normally you think maybe lovud is only only vertically. How do we say we know we say lovud even horizontally? You say lovud horizontally, but he's saying a greater chiddush, right? Lovud horizontally normally would be let's say the wall actually the physical wall reaches the level of the schach, but there's a gap between the schach and the wall. So that is, and the Gemara says, you say lobut, even though it's not vertical, it's horizontal. As we say it vertically, you say it horizontally. But here he's speaking about a case where you're actually, you're saying horizontally regarding a halachic wall. You're saying a good asik and then taking that, uh, that halachic wall and associating it with the schach based on lobut, right? He's saying even if the physical walls reach the height of the schach, 
Taimelon, die im Heim Ruchokim in Hasrach Schloss mit Wochen Posel, Verkoschkim Boser, Psula, Philo, Itfanis, Gwos, Hasser, Wochen Bioser, Chom Mechitze, Shagdoim, Chom Livkoa, Tachtov, Ene Chashub Mechitze, Klau. To be continued. We didn't get there yet, we're not talking, we didn't get there yet. I'm just telling you, this is what the wrong, it's a Rav Kivega. The Mechaber doesn't take this into account. Rav Kivega says that you should take into account, we didn't get there yet, the, the Iran. How much. Let's say you have the base. The base is, let's say, six talking. And let's say the railing on the porch is three talking. No, so it's not a problem. It's not, no, it has to be inside. The sukkah has to be inside. Outside means nothing. Right, right, right. Correct.